The top stories tonight and why news. Malacanang is confident that the investigation into the Duterte administration's drug war will never reach trial. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority admits facing challenges in the pilot implementation of Alert Level 4 in the National Capital Region. The 19 cases in the Philippines may reach the 3 million mark by mid-October, according to the UP. Lack of budget prevents the Philippine Defense Department from acquiring state-of-the-art fighter jets. The Australian aviation sector may face potential shortage of pilots. Microsoft to ditch passwords for signing in on Microsoft account. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, September 16, 2021. I'm Herdine Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The International Criminal Court is continuing its investigation into the alleged violations of extrajudicial killings and the human rights situation in the Philippines. But President Rodrigo Duterte is still determined not to cooperate in the inquiry. Meanwhile, the Commission on Human Rights says that they will have to wait for the formal communication from the ICC. Nel Maribuho will tell us why. The Commission on Human Rights has no idea what particular cases the International Criminal Court will be investigating. But CHR Chairperson Chito Gascon said these might also be the ones they are looking into. He is also clueless as to what will be the Commission's participation in the inquiry. Chairperson Gascon clarified during the budget deliberations in the House of Representatives that their mandate emanates from what is stated in the 1987 Constitution and not with Rome statute or treaty that established the International Criminal Court. In previous uh, investigations in other countries where there are also uh, institutions like us, the National Human Rights Institution, uh, in the conduct of the investigation of the ICC, there was uh, very little, if at all, interaction between the ICC and the NHRI. The reason being, Your Honours, is our mandate is within the mandate of our Constitution and our laws. Their mandate is with respect to the Rome Treaty and the what's called the um, um, international crimes defined in that treaty. Nonetheless, Gascon assures that if they receive a formal communication and request from the ICC, CHR will take whatever they present in that formal request under consideration at the appropriate time. Meanwhile, Malacanang is confident that the investigation into his drug war will stay stuck pre-trial chamber and will never reach trial. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque also maintained that the ICC has no jurisdiction over the country because of the Philippines' withdrawal from the Rome Statute last March 17, 2019. Wala pong reaksyon ng presidente dahil sa mula't mula niya, sinasabi niya na siya ay mamamatay muna bago siya haharap sa mga dayuhang mga West. No? So, ang aking prediction po, matutulog lang po yung kasong yan dahil in the absence of cooperation, lalong-lalo na sa kapulisan, e eh, wala po talagang ebidensya na makakadap. CHR disclosed that it has taken cognizance of a total of 3,423 alleged extrajudicial killings linked to war on drugs from May 2016 to August 31, 2021. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte admits there is corruption in the government. However, he vouches for the integrity of his cabinet members by saying none of them is corrupt. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. 
President Rodrigo Duterte instructed Solicitor General Jose Calida to write to the Commission on Audit to formally ask to go over the records of the Philippine Red Cross or PRC. The President wants to know why the PRC charges those who need blood even though they get it free from donors. President Duterte went on to accuse Senator Gordon of using the agency's funds for his political gains. Gordon is the chairman of the humanitarian organization in the country. Ma -mah Mahilig kayo magba-bloodletting. Isang batalyon na uh, polis, isang batalyon na uh, ar army. Tapos sa mga tao dyan kung kailangan bumili. Ang mahirap dyan o mayaman gusto ng dugo sa Red Cross, nagbabayad. Isa naman yung mga dugo na kinuha mo dyan sa mga sundalo, pati polis, pati yung mga civilian. At I'm, I'm just trying to reconcile. What, what, what's the... Magbayad ka. Amid the Senate and House of Representatives investigation on the management of COVID-19 response funds of the Department of Health, President Duterte acknowledged there is corruption in government. However, he stood firm that none of his cabinet members is involved in irregularities and anomalies. Meron. Meron sa gobyerno, hindi magsabi, hindi wala. I would be lying if I said there is no corruption. In some other offices now, agencies, departments, there are. But I'm make, making you this guarantee. Yung cabinet members go wala yan. Puro malinis yan. Ang mga senador meron. Gordon is one. The chief executive hailed the House hearing for conducting a more Zane hearing, but slammed Senator Gordon again for cutting off resource persons in the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee inquiry. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the implementation of general community quarantine alert level 4 in Metro Manila starts today. Under this uh, classification, some establishments are already allowed to operate on a limited capacity. Along with a pilot implementation, some local government units install vaccination seal and offer incentives to promote business. J.P. Nunez will give us an update live. Uh, yes, J.P., good evening. Go ahead. Yes, William, Caloocan, Mandaluyong, and San Juan cities install fully vaccinated seal to compliant business establishment along with the pilot implementation of Alert Level 4 in National Capital Region. 100% vaccination seal means employees of a business establishment are fully vaccinated. San Juan City will also give incentives to fully vaccinated customers. This, however, will depend upon the business owners, but discounts and previews are among them. They just need to present a valid ID and vaccination card for verification. The Department of the Interior and Local Government said restaurants and other establishments should check the vaccination card of customers if they are fully inoculated to avail the indoor services. But San Juan Mayor Francis Zamora issues a warning against those who will try to present fake vaccination cards. Sa ngayon, ang San Juan po, meron tayong existing ordinance kung saan we will penalize you 5,000 pesos at pwede kayong makulong ng 6 months to 1 year kung mahuli namin kayo na gumagamit ng peking vaccination card. Along with the easing of some restrictions, is the implementation of granular lockdowns in areas with high COVID-19 cases, one of which is at H. Santo Street, Barangay Tejeros, Makati City. Food packs and swab testing for the affected residents were immediately deployed. COVID-19 home care kits will also be given to positive asymptomatic patients. Based on the data from the National Capital Region Police Office, 57 areas in Metro Manila are currently under granular lockdown. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority Chairman Ben Hur Abales Jr. admits the pilot implementation of alert level restrictions in NCR faces challenges. Well, of course, on day one, una una baka ang tao naninibago pa, medyo naririto pa iba. Pangalawang challenge is that 
dapat malaman nila baka papasok sila sa restaurant, may mga lugar na pwede ka lang bakunado kung ikaw ay dine in, no? Baka hindi nila alam 'yon, no? At of course, pangatlo, yung pag-check nito. Malacañang meanwhile said there is no estimate yet on when Metro Manila will be placed under under a more relaxed restrictions. So, hindi ko po alam kung kailan natin makakamit yan. Pero ang, ang importante po sa Metro Manila ay eh, mahigit 60% na po ang ating pagbabakuna. William, IATF will observe the alert level restriction every week for the assessment. That is our latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, JP Nunez, reporting live. The outdoor tourist attractions reopen in Metro Manila today, but the Department of Tourism records low number of tourists. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. The public is still adjusting to the protocols while trying to understand the policies under the pilot testing of the COVID-19 alert level system in the National Capital Region. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat explains this as low turnout of individuals were recorded in some of the leading tourist attractions in the city of Manila today. Based on the data of the National Parks Development Committee, only 132 tourists visited the Rizal Park, while Intramuros administration only had at least 20 visitors in Baluarte de San Diego and about 80 in Fort Santiago. Right now, kasi di ba naninibago pa naman yung mga tao eh. Kasi biglang dati GCQ, MGCQ, ngayon alert level 4. So, pero ang narealize ko pag nung nalalaman ng mga tao na bukas na pala, yun pupunta sila. So hopefully by this weekend. The outdoor tourist activities resume today as the government allows it under the COVID-19 alert level 4. Citizens aged 18 to 65 years old, regardless of vaccination status, may travel for leisure. They may visit tourist attractions allowed to operate under a limited capacity and other restrictions. But Secretary Puyat says they are expecting the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases to soon allow vaccinated citizens above 65 years of age to go out for outdoor tourist activities. Ang napansin lang talaga namin is gusto lang talaga makalabas ng mga tao. So um, ngayon nga may age restriction pero hinihingi namin sa IATF na for example yung 65 and above na fully vaccinated naman na kung pwedeng payagan kahit na may time slot sila 6 to 8 in the morning para makapag-exercise naman. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The League of Provinces of the Philippines wants the national government to allow them to decide what quarantine restrictions they will implement in their respective localities. League of Provinces in the Philippines President and Marinduque Governor Presbitero Velasco Jr. said they are the ones who know the situation in their area better. level one. Eh, mahala na kami mag-adjust kung magagawin namin level 2 o level 3 at uh, mabilis namin pwedeng i-implement yun. At uh, ngayon, eh, no, no, di pa lang namin yung RIATF. Hmm. At uh, kung meron silang uh, suggestion o gusto silang baguhin, eh, sasabihin sa amin at mag-a-adjust na lang kami. Provinces are still strict in accepting tourists because the possibility of the transmission of COVID-19 cases is still high. LPP is also asking the government to allot more vaccines, including storages. So, tingin ko yung government, eh, kung may pondo pa, eh, they should uh, provide uh, ultra-low freezers para pati naman yung mga malalayong LGUs at yung mga lower-ranked LGUs ay magbigyan naman ng uh, magagandang uh, uh, bakuna, katulad ng Pfizer, uh, Janssen at uh, yung Moderna. The reproduction number of coronavirus disease in the national capital region has improved in the past few days. However, based on a forecast by researchers from the University of the Philippines, COVID-19 cases in the country may still peak by next month. Aiko Miguel explains why. 
Regions 1, 5, 6, and 12 have seen a prominent rise in COVID-19 cases since August, based on a report of the UP COVID-19 pandemic response team. According to Professor Joma Rabahante, COVID-19 transmission may have been slowing down, but the country's positivity rate is still above 5%. Uh, tumataas pa rin yung numbers, especially yung 30% natin, nearly 30% na positivity rate, that's that's very serious because kung meron tatlong tao na ano na matest, isa doon posibleng mag-positive. And there are many people like that, uh, not just in NCR but sa buong Philippines, lalo na kung saan ako nakatira, sadly, sa Calabar Zone. Professor Abahante explains that if the trajectory of cases continues to rise, the peak of COVID-19 cases in the country may be observed by the last week of September. And by mid-October, 1 million COVID-19 cases may be added to the country's coronavirus tally. Kung tere-derecho ha, posible umabot tayo ng 3 million. Depende, mga 3 million siguro. Medyo mabilis kasi yung increase natin ngayon. So, yung ating million na pagbilang dati ay na months posibleng uh, weeks ngayon. From the projections, yes, posible. It's possible. But I hope not. Kasi bilangin nyo pa lang, um, kung meron, kunyari lang, 20,000 per day, di ba? It times 5 mo, 100,000 agad yun. So mabilis lang yung 1 million if ganun yung ating cases per day. The Octa Research Team shares the same projection. We might be getting close to the peak nationally and that's why, we, you know, we have Again, renewed hope na we might not hit 30,000. So most likely today, we'll still see 20,000 plus cases. 19, 20,000, maybe even up to 21, 22,000. Um, but uh, we hope na yun nga, it will be controlled na, in the sense na it will not exceed ito, the, the previous high, 25, 26,000. And maybe the trend will start to decrease maybe next week or two weeks. You know? We hope. These experts emphasize that the COVID-19 figures could still go down, depending on how the public will observe the health protocols implemented by the government. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte has ordered an inspection of closed setting facilities in the city. This was after another COVID-19 outbreak was recorded in two convents in the city where over 100 nuns and staff tested positive to the virus. 200 closed long-term facilities are scheduled to be inspected to determine the vaccine status of the residents. The city engineering office has been tapped to recommend a way in which these facilities can re retrofit their building to make them more resistant to virus transmission. Gusto ko sana magbigay ng rekomendasyon itong ating building official at ang city architect kung paano magiging mas resilient to viral, viral transmission ang mga buildings na ito. Maaring kailangan i-retrofit o kailangan ng um, magdagdag ng ventilation facilities na meron namang guidelines. The city has first recorded a COVID-19 outbreak in an orphanage facility where about 122 children and staff were infected with the virus. The Philippines today recorded 21,261 new COVID-19 infections, pushing the tally of cases to 2,304,192. The Department of Health or DOH said the additional cases pushed the country's active tally to 177,946. Of the active cases, 86.1% are mild, 9.2% are asymptomatic, 2.65% are moderate, 1.4% are severe, and 0.6% are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 2,090,228 with 13,644 new recovered patients. Fatalities climbed, however, to 36,018 after 277 more patients succumbed to the viral disease. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has 226,445,291. 
while the deaths have surged to 4,661,137, and according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 41,538,934 and 666,624 respectively, according to the CSSE, followed by countries like India and Brazil. And uh, meanwhile, the Presidential Communications Operations Office has agreed to submit to the Senate its draft measure seeking to ban trolls. This, as some senators questioned its hiring of over 8,000 contract of service employees. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The government's communication arm, the Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO, maintains they are not hiring internet trolls. In the agency's Senate budget hearing, Senate Minority Leader Franklin Delon questioned why the agency hired 1,479 contract of service employees, while there are still over 1,700 vacant plantilla positions to be filled in the PCOO and its attached agencies. There are more than 300 contract of service employees in the PCOO proper. Contract of service on the screen, sir, is 330. Three and ayon. Di di that you are hiring trolls. PCOO Undersecretary Chris Abland says efforts are ongoing to fill in the vacancies. Right now, we are reducing the number of uh, contract of service by absorbing many of our contract of service as regular plantilla. Uh, but uh, the items are still open for filling up. The senators have asked the agency to submit the information of the contract of service employees, including the daily time records, to ensure that they are legitimate and real employees. Brilon has also asked PCOO to submit a draft bill seeking to ban and penalize trolls. Assuming, uh, you know, uh, we, we, I take it that you are telling us the truth that you have no budget for trolls, do you think we should, make, we should enact a law? which will ban troll farms and penalize those who engage in the trolling troll activities? Would you endorse that? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think it's a, it's a, a good idea to, to, uh, to enact something like that or even perhaps uh, go, go beyond it uh, by um, uh, penalizing uh, people who spread fake news. In July, 12 senators filed a resolution seeking to probe the alleged use of public funds to fund troll farms. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Bureau of Internal Revenue is currently investigating around 250 social media influencers. The Department of Finance, in a statement, said the BIR has issued letters to authority to check if they have been paying taxes. This after the country's tax collection, Bureau cited reports that some influencers have not been paying their taxes despite earning huge incomes. Social media influencers are classified as self-employed individuals and their earnings are generally considered as business income. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police continue its efforts to prevent any terror threat in the country. But the government is unlikely to procure additional state-of-the-art fighter jets due to budgetary constraints. Leia Ilagan tells us why. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana confirms that they don't have enough funds to buy Lockheed Martin F-16 jet fighters of its multi-role fighter or MRF program. Lorenzana said F-16 is way too expensive and that they can only buy two of these given the budget allotted for them. Instead, they are planning to buy a much cheaper of its kind. Yung pirang nakalaan ay kung bibili tayo ng F-16 ay dalawa lang ang mabibili natin. Samantalang kung bibili tayo ng Gripen, yung Swedish-made fighter aircraft, ay anim. The Defense Secretary said, 
that the only way to acquire these F-16 jet fighters is through a favorable financing scheme by the U.S. The American F-16 fighter jet is designed as an air superiority day fighter. It is a very good aircraft that even new or rookie pilots can operate and land it safely. While the Swedish made Gripen does well on list of both BVR and dogfighting combatants. Both has a top speed of Mach 2.0 and can carry different kinds of bombs, missiles, and sensors. It is also armed with a 20mm cannon. F-16 fighter jet cost between 12 million US dollar to 35 million US dollar or 598 million pesos to 1.7 billion pesos each. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Foreign Affairs said three more Filipinos have been evacuated from Afghanistan last weekend. Of the 20 Filipinos remaining in Kabul, 18 have expressed their intention to stay for work reasons, while two are requesting for repatriation. In a budget hearing at the Senate, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. said some of the Filipinos who intend to stay are part of the international humanitarian group Doctors Without Borders. Loxin adds a total of 191 Filipinos have been evacuated with the help of employers, partner countries, and the OFW's initiative. I thank our OFWs, our overseas Filipinos, because before we knew it, they had found their own accommodations in flights getting out of Kabul before we could even help them. That's one thing about the OFWs, high performance, low maintenance. The DFA assures the Philippine Embassy in Islamabad, Pakistan continues to monitor the status of Filipinos in Afghanistan and stands ready to assist them anytime. Alert level 4 is still up in the Taliban-led country. The Commission on Elections has disclosed that there are about 6.5 million deactivated voters in the country. Thus, Comedy Commissioner Maria Rowena Guanzon urges them to grab the opportunity to be reactivated. Para mag-reactivate, hindi na kailangan pumunta ang Comelec office. Mag-email po kayo sa inyong election officer. Ikiusap po kami, sa, lalo na sa mga senior citizens, PWD at mga buntis, na kung pumila po kayo, kailangan ipaalam nyo na nandyan kayo. Huwag po kayong mahiya, pumunta kayo sa courtesy or express lane dahil priority po kayo. Commissioner Guanzon added, the activated voters need not visit Comelec offices. They just have to contact the election officers or offices. Visit uh, www.gov.ph to get the complete list of email addresses and contact numbers. Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States have formed a new security partnership called AUKUS. This will enable Australian Navy to acquire a nuclear-powered submarine fleet as one of its first initiatives. Navy and Dog details why, live. Yes, Maeve? LC Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the new alliance is designed to counter threats in the Indo-Pacific region. Morrison said teams from the three countries would draw up a joint plan over the coming 18 months for assembling the new Australian nuclear-powered submarine fleet, which will be built in Adelaide. The project will make Australia only the seventh country in the world to have submarines propelled by nuclear reactors. To make these challenges, to help deliver the security and stability our region needs, we must now take our partnership to a new level. A partnership that seeks to engage, not to exclude, to contribute, not take, and to enable and empower, not to control or coerce. And so, friends, AUKUS is born, a new enhanced trilateral security partnership between Australia, the United Kingdom and the United States. AUKUS. 
The leader said of the, th um, the three nations, the deal does not extend to nuclear weapons and does not violate nuclear non-proliferation treaties. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson clarified this point in his address. We're opening a new chapter in our friendship and the first task of this partnership will be to help Australia acquire a fleet of nuclear-powered submarines, emphasizing, of course, that the submarines in question will be powered by nuclear reactors, not armed with nuclear weapons. And our work will be fully in line with our non-proliferation obligations. For his part, U.S. President Joe Biden highlighted that the partnership would ensure the most modern capabilities of defense against rapid threats. I want to be exceedingly clear about this. We're not talking about nuclear armed submarines. These are conventionally armed submarines that are powered by nuclear reactors. This technology is proven. It's safe. And the United States and the UK have been operating nuclear powered submarines for decades. Furthermore, the three leaders said that the U.S. and the U.K. will also leverage their expertise to bring quantum, artificial intelligence, cyber and undersea capabilities to Australia. Elsie? Thank you, Mavian Dog. Lawmakers in Thailand on Wednesday started debating the draft prohibiting torture and enforced disappearance after years of delay. RK Lyorka details why live. RK, go ahead. LC torture has happened in many parts of Thailand, but has never been recorded as legal cases. This is because the act of state officials were not considered criminal, according to Cross-Cultural Foundation Director Ponten Konkachonkit. The draft act named Prevention and Suppression of Torture and Enforced Disappearance was approved by the cabinet in 2016, but its progress stalled in the legislature. Aside from the draft act, the country also signed the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance or ICPPED in 2012, but has not ratified the treaty. Proposed punishments for anyone found guilty of these acts include hefty fines and jail terms increased to 10 to 25 years if the victim is severely injured and 15 to 30 years for life imprisonment in the event of victim's death. According to Justice Minister Somsak Tetsutin, the torturing and disappearing of people by state officials is a gross violation of human rights and cannot be conducted under any circumstances. Elsie? RK, when is the target date of the draft to be approved? Well, Elsie, according to National Assembly President Shuan Likpai, voting of the various draft bills is held today, while the lawmakers expect the final version to be passed early next year. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, RK Liorca. New Zealand's Indigenous Political Party has called on the Parliament to officially change the country name to Aotearoa. The petition also seeks to restore the original Te Reo Maori names for all town cities by 2026. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has not commented publicly on the petition, but it has already sparked opposition from David Seymour, leader of the right-wing ACT Party. The country's former deputy prime minister, who himself has Maori heritage, has also said changing the name is dumb extremism. But Te Pati Maori leader said that it was well past time that Te Reo Maori was restored to its rightful place as the first and official language of Aotearoa. A potential shortage of Australian pilots is foreseen to happen as U.S. airlines are reportedly recruiting grounded pilots from Australia. Paul Gachalian will tell us why live. Paul? I'll see, due to Australia's border closure, many aviation staff and crews have been grounded, which makes it an attractive supply of workforce for U.S. airlines to fill the gap as U.S. aviation industry tries to bounce back. More than 70 inquiries in the last two weeks from pilots considering a move to the U.S. were received by aviation careers coach Kirsty Ferguson. Two of the major American airlines, GoJet and SkyWest, have since been actively recruiting pilots in Australia and holding interviews. Under the U.S. government E3 visa scheme, Australian pilots who receive an offer of employment can live and work in the U.S. for two years 
but can be extended indefinitely. The global aviation industry is expected to be short of 600,000 pilots by 2040. Since many of its 5,500 members no longer hold current qualifications due to lack of training and recent experience, according to the president of the Australia Federation of Air Pilots, continuous reduction of flights have reportedly impacted the wages that pilots receive, and that is currently driving them to either change career or look for better opportunities elsewhere. Elsie? Paul, when is the current plan or intention of the Australia to open up its borders again and have more commercial planes flying in? Well, Elsie, the vaccination rate in Australia needs to be at 80% before airlines may begin to resume some of its operations. Plans are still very fluid and it may change depending on factors. On many factors, but at the moment, airline industry in Australia believes this will happen in mid-December of this year. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Paul Gachalian. Cyber criminals are exploiting the pandemic and lockdown to disrupt the Australian government. Nina Bascon explains why. Cyber attacks have been reported in Australia every 7.8 minutes. In an annual threat report made by the Australian Cyber Security Centre or ACSC, over 67,500 cyber crimes have been revealed in the last financial year. According to Abigail Bradshaw, the head of ACSC, the cyber threats are increasing as Australians do more online activities as a consequence of the lockdowns. Hackers and cyber criminals also target the nation's critical and essential services such as hospitals, electricity, food distribution and communications. The health sector reported the second highest number of incidents which escalated further as COVID-19 vaccines were rolled out. Moreover, according to Assistant Defense Minister Andrew Hasty, cyber infiltration remains one of the biggest threats to Australia's national security and democracy. Meanwhile, the report also states that over 33 billion have been lost from businesses and individuals due to cybercrime throughout the year. Nina Bascon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Multinational technology corporation Microsoft announced in their website that they will ditch passwords for signing in on Microsoft account. Jane Robles tells us why live. Jane? LC, nobody likes passwords. Aside from being inconvenient, it is a prime target for attacks. This was according to Microsoft Corporate Vice President for Security, Bazu Jakal when they announced the new sign-in option for Microsoft users that is expected to roll out over the coming weeks. Users have now the options to log in passwordless and use the Microsoft Authenticator app instead. The app will send a verification code to their phone or secondary email address. A biometric-based technology called Windows Hello is another option for a passwordless sign-in where users only need their face, eye, or fingerprint to log in. Microsoft first removed passwords for commercial users in March this year, but have finally decided to ditch it to all Microsoft users to address the common problems associated with it. This includes the inability to remember complex passwords, while two simple passwords are open for hackers to attack. Password attacks amount to a loss of 18 billion annually, with 579 hackers stealing online accounts for every second. Microsoft said that people can always go back to using a password if they opt to, but is certain that the future is passwordless. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Jane Robles. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 14, it says, Let all your things be done with charity. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 16, 2021. I'm Herlene Delgado. 
Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Yung perang nakalaan ay kung bibili tayo ng F-16, ay dalawa lang ang mabibili natin. Samantalang kung bibili tayo ng Gripen, yung Swedish-made uh, fighter aircraft, ay anim. Well, of course, sa so day one, Una-una, baka ang tao naninibago pa. Medyo nalilito pa iba. Pangalawang challenge is that dapat malaman nila, baka papasok sila sa restaurant, may mga lugar na pwede ka lang bakunado kung ikaw ay dine-in. No? Baka hindi nila alam yun. No? At of course, pangatlo, yung pag-check nito. Wala po. Wala pong reaksyon ng presidente dahil sa mula't mula niya, sinasabi niya na siya ay mamamatay muna bago siya haharap sa mga dayuhang mga West.